This is the show for grown-ups. And they say bad words. And they say bad words. Say final warning. Final warning. <laughs> Welcome to the Pod of Blunders. I am your host and DM, Nate Magnuski. With me today is Richard Sullivan. Good morning. Ryan Bolger. Good night. And returning special guest, CJ Mickey. Good evening. That was so out of order. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost cool that CJ came and dead dicked it all up. I don't know what's going on. That's all right. <laughs> we exist in all time periods. Yeah. So Richard, what are we playing today? We're playing Lumberlands. A few months ago now, I interviewed friend of the show, Eric Jensen, the creator of an amazing little setting called Lumberlands. And we wanted to bring it to the show. And so I asked him, what game should we use to play this? You know, I'm thinking some, some little OSR type game, something light. And he said, well, my publisher, being Lost Pages, created Into the Odd. So use that, please. They they probably really appreciate that. And so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to read some introductory fiction to you. A little bit of opening narrative to get you, you know, set the mood, let some candles, smell some pine tar. <clears throat> Let me get my cool voice on. Mm. Ah, the Lumberlands, where a person can earn their fortune so long as they have a strong back and a little gumption. The land is as bountiful as it is dangerous, full of magical trees and the voracious beasts that live beneath their boughs. Despite the deadly dangers, daring adventurers seek to carve out new lives for themselves and have come here in droves to do so. And the more organized and entrepreneurial among them have formed rival lumber companies. These companies vary in size and ability, but the best among them, without question, is the Red Bear Lumber Company. Fast, powerful, ruthless. The Red Bear Lumber Company rules the roost, so to speak. They've even founded the region's biggest town, Squeamish, where their red and black gingham flag can be seen hanging from just about every building. Yes, it's true. The Red Bear Lumber Company is known throughout the land as employing only the smartest, strongest, and most hardworking lumberjacks and lumberjills, which is why they had no interest in hiring you. Richard, introduce your character and tell me why the Red Bear Lumber Company rejected you. Well, my name is Jacobus Witchbane Little. I was rejected for my pre-existing conditions. Now, I don't think they can do that legally. <laughs> <laughs> and it would just cost too much to take them to court, which I don't have. Do you want to shed some light on your pre-existing conditions? I have rights, and you can't ask me that question. No lefts, only rights, and that's the problem. <laughs> no, I uh, in a previous job, I was, I was injured. I'm missing three toes on the left foot and mm. six on the right. Um, wait. <laughs> because of this, I've, I've racked up considerable medical debt. I don't have health insurance. I am very much in debt. And so if I see you in a crowd, what makes you stand out to me? What do you look like? Well, you'll know me by my limp, first and foremost. <laughs> I, you wouldn't know me b so much by my physical description, but the stench. Okay. <laughs> you'll know me by my stench from a mile away. Mm. Now, is that from the gangrenous toe wounds, or is that just because you stink? I live in the woods, and I can only shower maybe once a week. Hmm. All right. Under a, a cool spring, or if I'm lucky enough to find a truck stop. Other than that, it's just me and the land. It's kind of beautiful, man. That's Jacobus. Thank you, Jacobus. CJ, introduce Sammy, please. So I'll be playing Sammy Treater, who is a Sasquatch. So I think the the company is obviously racist, and they they didn't like me because I'm a Sasquatch, clearly. Technically, Sasquatches and Lumberjacks and Jills are mortal enemies but i i wouldn't really know that uh, i was found as a baby and raised by a family of lumberjacks now I, i'm sending out to be a lumberjack myself beautiful and uh, as a sasquatch what do you look like well clearly i i've got hair all over myself i wear a red and black plaid shirt with jeans no boots because i don't need them i got sasquatch feet 
And most notably, my hair is very, very silky all across my body because I'm in debt to my friend Dave, who I borrowed his pine oil that he uses for his beard, but I use it for my entire body and I used it all up. So now I have to pay him back for that really expensive pine oil. Mm. And what does your character look like? Um, that... <laughs> oh my god excellent all right and ryan tell us about vernon yeah i'm vernon easy o'toole they didn't hire me because i like to make love to the trees and they've frowned upon that <laughs> listen <laughs> don't kink shame i'm not here to yuck you young buddy it's all right dare i ask what does vernon look like well vernon's just a, a simple easy going guy Little straw hat, overalls, no shirt, gotta gotta breathe. Well, don't worry, fellas. I know the Red Bear Lumber Company rejected you, but there are a lot of other options. The blue wolves, the yellow catfish, the silver marmots. Unfortunately, they also had no interest in employing you. But lucky for you, you have one more option. You find yourself standing outside of a, well, a shack cobbled together from parts of salvaged wagons. A dirty puce on chartreuse gingham flag flaps lengthily against the wood. Welcome to the headquarters of the Puce Possums. How did you guys meet and why are you going into business together? We met in the unemployment line. And I think we got to talking about how we would like to get off government assistance and make our own way. All right, libertarian. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. So we have tree fuckery, racism, and government assistance issues. Okay. I, I think I'm with them because everyone else just left me behind. And I was mm. just stuck with them. I like that. Uh, Vernon, do you have anything to add or just in it for the trees? <laughs> in it for the trees. And I enjoyed Jacobus's smell. I thought it was very potent and fragrant. Well, thank you. You know, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so as you enter this shithole building, the door falls off the hinges in your hand. A very weary looking man glances up over his half moon glasses and frowns. And he says, just uh, put that anywhere. I don't know. He stands up shakily and walks over. He knocks over a big pile of glass bottles. And he kind of does like half bow, half nod to you. And he goes, uh, Roland Shakes, uh, how you doing, guys? I'm doing quite well. How are you? Ah, Jesus, you're big. Okay. Uh, yeah, great. Um, I, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not great, guys. I haven't been doing so well. <laughs> you might not know by the disappearance of my building, but we're, we're a little, little hard up. A little hard up, guys. Uh, you, uh, you looking for work? Yes. Oh, well, that's good. I oh, thank God. See, all the other companies are so desperate. They just take everybody who's got any sort of ability. So uh, I guess, uh, you know, it's a miracle, a miracle that you came to me. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I've just, oh, it's been a lot of long nights with uh, me and the old bottle, you know, crying, hoping that the sound of the coyotes drowns out my tears. That, that's a lot to tell us in just a first meeting. <laughs> yeah, well, you're awfully sad, sir. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not sad. It's just, uh, it's great. You know, who who could want anything more? And he looks around and you see his eyes just well up with tears. And uh, he goes, well, truth be told, uh, we're, I'm actually a little bit more desperate than I might have come off originally. Um, you know, I had a, a crew of fellas go out to one of our forward lumber camps. It's kind of a town that we share with some of the other smaller groups. And, uh, well, they haven't come back yet. And I was hoping that maybe you could go out there and take a look, see what happened to them. These aren't the kind of guys to work extra time. They kind of put their time in and come home, and that's all. So uh, if you guys are willing, I'll pay you pretty well. I wonder if they saw some sexy trees out there. Well, that's concerning what you just said there, but I guess I really can't be choosy, can can I? It's a human. uh, No no offense, Mr. Sasquatch. uh, I barely classify as a human, but thank you. So what do you say, guys? You want to maybe take on this job and help out, become, you know, real puce pumas? Nope, puce possums. <laughs> Sorry, I drink a lot of liquor. <laughs> Wait, do we know why they disappeared? So essentially, it's like someone, people went out and they disappeared. They never came back, right? Yep. They allegedly went to this lumber camp. Mm-hmm. And then they were supposed to come back a week ago, he says. Mm. Do we know like anything about the lumber camp or the area? Dotted throughout the, the frontier here, there's a lot of private lumber companies that'll set up their own towns. This particular place doesn't have a name. It's just where all the really shitty companies send their guys as a forward camp. Mm -hmm. So they kind of pool their meager resources and made this 
ramshackle spot miles and miles and miles out into the woods. That's really all you know about it. It's probably got a poor reputation. Well, I mean, if, you, if you'll pay, I, I guess I'm in. I don't have much choice. Oh, good. Uh, you know, tell you what, you guys are so agreeable and you guys actually seem like you know what you're doing. I'll make you a deal. I'll pay you for two weeks, no matter how much time it takes you to go out and come back. You do it in two days, you get two weeks pay for two days, okay? I, I just, I need you to do this for me, all right? I need you to go back as quick as you can and come back with the guys. What if we come back without the guests? That would be not great. That would be, and you see him start crying more and he's like, "That you can't do that to me. You've got to get him back. We'll, we'll do our best. It, it, do you really attach to these fellas? And he kind of turns to you and grabs you by the lapels. And he's like, my son's out there. Uh, Tommy, he's only oh, 14. Oh, okay, okay. This is the closest a human's been to me. Um, I kind of like it. <laughs> and so he kind of, he's like, I'm sorry you had to see that, but he's my only boy and I need him back. Little Tommy. <laughs> this is his first time away. I said he was too young, but he said, no, I'm going to make you proud, Daddy. He goes, look, uh, I, I don't know if you guys want to set out now, if you want to take the night, but I can give you some equipment if you guys need it. I don't know what y'all have with you, but I can, I can give you some stuff. I do have some things in reserve here. Do you have hot running water? I mean, I don't have a lot of things. <laughs> hot water that runs is, is one of those. I mean, I can get you hot water. And there's a stream out back, so I can get you running water. But hot running water is a bridge too far, my friend. I can't do that. I'm sorry. At the very least, I'll give you a cart. I'll give you some axes. And uh, if you need it, I'll give you a gunky. A what? You, you guys have been around. You know what a gunky is. They're the goat-donkey hybrids that all the people out here use. Smart as a goat, stubborn as a donkey. Strong as some kind of combination of the two, as you might oh, imagine. What are those? I had a buddy who liked to have sex with those. That's what? not my thing, though. <laughs> I am confused by your whole steez, sir. I don't know what's going on with you, but I am not a fan. But hey, again, I'm more desperate than I am sensical about this. So let's do this. First, here you go, sirs. And he gives you gingham shirts. And he has to give the Sasquatch two that he's kind of like buttoned oh. together side to side. Oh. So <laughs> he, he can have mine. I don't like to wear the shirts. Do you have like a bow tie in this, this pattern? So he kind of looks around. And he rips one of the sleeves off, one of the larger shirts. He's like, I have this scarf. All right, I'll, I'll wear that. All right. I, I know we don't look like a, like a very upstanding outfit. I understand that, but I do have some high-quality axes for y'all. All right. You know, this is a dangerous lands, and sometimes lumberjacks get crushed by some logs or eaten by some uh, animals, and their stuff usually just sits there in the woods waiting for someone to pick it up. And so I say, you know, why can't it be me? If you guys aren't squeamish, I have a couple things you might be interested in. Sure. And he wants to give you each your own axe. Now, I have a D100 table of things in the Lumberlands. is how you can specialize your equipment. I would like you to roll a D100, and I can tell you what kind of axe you get. Because this is a fantastic list. I love this book. Eric is a genius. See. Anyone want to go first? I rolled a 57, Nate. Your axe is pretty sweet. On one side, it's an axe. But if you turn it over... It has a very small saw on the other side. Ooh. It's a smacks. No. A saw. Where does the M come from? <laughs> a small saw. Oh, all right. Fair enough. I rolled a 74. Okay. <laughs> it's an axe on one side, and it's a three-foot-long half, and then an axe on the other side. But in the middle of that, there's a handle that goes vertical. So you can kind of hold it by the vertical thing and use it like a two-handed weapon, but it's designed for one-handed use. Is this like Darth Maul's lightsaber, but axes? Picture that, yeah. But, but like instead of it. holding it sideways, you hold it like with the handle, an extra handle that's in the middle off the horizontal bar. It goes like this. So I could kind of like spin it between my two hands and like... Yeah. It'd be like a helicopter. Exactly like that, yes. Awesome. Helicopter so axe. I'm, that's how <laughs> I'm writing it. Okay. And Vernon, dare I ask because you rolled? <clears throat> I rolled a 68. Yours appears to have been bedazzled by someone who really wanted fancier stuff. It's a oh, regular boy. axe, but there's, it's just festooned with spinning silver discs all up and down the haft. And they don't do anything? No, they are very pretty, uh, very, very shiny. Not quite my, my <laughs> style, but thanks, sir. I will right, not like, look... 
a if gift grunky a in the face. Uh, yeah. Let me let me see what else is in this this <laughs> yeah this chest of axes. How about a nine to seven? Okay, let's find out what that one is. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So it's a regular axe, but this one has religious carvings in the handle. <laughs> oh boy! You know what, sir? I'm gonna go ahead and take the bejazzled one. <laughs> instead. There's no god in what you do with trees. <laughs> <laughs> So he brings you out back to this cart, and it's, of course, like everything else in here, half ass and half broken. He goes, okay, well, you're going to have to deal with uh, the last gunky I got. This is old Maxie. Say hi, Maxie. You've seen gunkies before. They're usually about, you know, five feet tall at the shoulder, and they have usually like fairly intelligent eyes for an animal. This one looks like it's seen some things. This one's just kind of staring off into the middle distance and has been terribly scarred. And every now and then you hear a stick crack and it kind of looks around like all squirrely. Like, what the hell was that? And it kind of looks at you without really looking at you, but you feel it's seeing right through you. Sammy, can, can you speak to it? No, I can't. And I, I don't appreciate you saying that. <laughs> he goes, look, up, boys, I don't know if you want to leave now. But if you do, go ahead. But I want to tell you one thing. Aside from the men out there, and really, the only one I care about is Tommy. Hate to say it, but that's true. Rest of you, I mean, them are disposable. You can keep whatever else you find. I don't care about nothing. You bring me back my boy and I'll pay you what you're owed. All right. Sounds good. And then Sammy tries to get onto the gunky. So you swing your legs over. He doesn't seem to even notice you. You realize your feet touch the ground. <laughs> as you're over him. <laughs> All right. You guys ready? <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go. So what time of day do you figure it is? Uh, Mid-afternoon. So there's no road or path larger than a game trail after the first few hours of traveling. As voracious as the lumber companies are, the magic of this place makes the flora grow unnaturally fast. Who's on point? And is it for the whole day or do you switch off? I think Vernon's on point because I don't trust him behind us. <laughs> but I guess I'll take point. That's fine. So I'm going to need you to scout out a little bit and see what's around you. See how well you, you lead this caravan. Uh, how are you doing it? And what stat are you going to roll to do it? Uh, I'm guessing will would make the most sense. Sure, let's do some will. D20 and I have to roll under that? Yes. <laughs> mm. What Are is you your sure? will score? Uh, this, <laughs> three? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, do you want to know my, he, he, hold on, let me tell you my stats. And this is from that, you know, the, the one you provided in the email. Uh -huh. Six, 16 strength. Okay. Alright, that's really good. Four dexterity. Ooh, okay. Three, Three will, mm -hmm. two HP. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like a real ass kicker, but nothing else. Nope. What makes sense is his willpower is low. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it was just the trees, yeah. They're all around him. <laughs> Let's go ahead and roll this magical number, and it is a 17. Oh, boy. <laughs> I bet the Lorax sees you coming and is like, not this motherfucker again. <laughs> <laughs> I speak for the trees. Now, you motherfucker, get up off your knees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see some real nice fucking trees out there. Well, as you're looking at the trees, you're not paying attention to where you're going. And you stumble into this area where all the trees are marked with these blue and white pictures of skulls and flayed men. I think, Sammy, you've been in this area long enough. You know that this is Woad Ox territory. So they're like minotaurs, but they paint themselves blue. And they worship oh. the moon. And they don't suffer interlopers well. Hey, guys. Um, I... I think we've stumbled into a bad area. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I was looking at that naughty pine over there. You hear in the distance a horn. I try and kick my heels into the gunky. We got to get out of here and try and run. You see a single tear on the gunky's cheek. <laughs> now is not the time to be depressed. And it lies down. <laughs> no! Is this another never-ending story situation? <laughs> yeah, you're in the Swamp of Sorrows. Did I mention that? Can I pick up the gunky? <laughs> yeah, give me a strength check. All right, let's see. That is a 13, and my strength is 15. Hey, you succeed. So you lift this gunky without a problem, and he's kind of rises him out of his, uh, his torpor. And he looks around, and he's suddenly like, he understands the desperation of the situation. <laughs> So it's like one of those pullback cars where you're like, you hold it in the air and it goes, zzz, you put it down and it goes really fast across the rug. Yeah. It's like that, but in animal form. So what are you guys going to do? If anyone wants to, I could try to pick you up too. 
and then carry both of you off, and then someone can just run them behind. I'll take a I'll take a ride because uh, with my toes I can't run that fast. <laughs> okay, I try to pick up Jacobus. I'm assuming he just lets you and you leap into his arms. <laughs> so you're able to flee, but you lose something valuable to you. And I'll let you guys decide amongst yourselves who loses what. So look at your character sheets there. <laughs> I can lose my, my mirror. I don't know why I had it. I, you know what? I Sometimes I like to look at myself while I... <laughs> Stop talking with your mouth. I hate it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So Ryan loses his fucking mirror. Funny enough, I started with a long axe. So now that I have a way cooler long axe <laughs> or a helicopter axe, I think I'm just going to lose the long axe. So you don't all have to lose one thing. Collectively, oh. you have to lose one thing. So you can talk about yourself who wants to lose what. Please get I... rid of that mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it just, like, shatters when you look into it. <laughs> <laughs> the mirror's like, I've seen too much. <laughs> Please release A me mirror. from this. The one that's been chasing you follow you to the edge of their territory. You can start to see them in the back. They're not as tall as the Sasquatch. They're about between five and a half and six and a half feet tall. Maybe even six feet tall. That's about it between those two numbers. And <laughs> they chase you to the edge of the territory. And as soon as you cross another barrier of those weird painted trees, they stop. And they watch you go. Well, that's fucking eerie. <laughs> Looks like we successfully evaded that. <laughs> you solved my boat. <laughs> <laughs> Puzzle. <laughs> All right. I sat down the gunky. Wait, does the gunky have a name? That's Old Maxi. I sat down Old Maxi. And then I get back on. So, so far, it's been an eventful couple hours out of the uh, town. It's getting close to dinner time. Are you going to set camp early? Are you going to see if you can push on a little bit? Because this does matter how far you travel in a day. I look up to Jacobus, who I put on top of my shoulders. How are you feeling, little guy? <laughs> oh, I'm not tired at all. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I say we keep going. Because the, further, the more distance we get between us and those monsters, the better. How about right. you, uh, Vernon? Uh, a little out of breath. Oh, thank God. <laughs> 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 Wait, he wasn't running at all. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I guess we can keep going for a little bit longer. I, I have a little bit left in me. The next few hours pass fairly uneventfully. You see a lot of things where there were signs of people. There's there's tree stumps, but they're pretty much already grown over by moss. Uh, you see some track furrows that are already full of ponds teeming with life. Everything here seems verdant. Everything here seems very alive. There's nothing that's barren at all here. It's just, it's almost hard to get through because the trees are so close together. But you manage it. You guys are semi-experienced woodsmen, if not lumbermen. You hear something in the distance. It sounds like a man screaming. And you hear, it's not, hmm, how to describe it? It sounds like two pieces of rough bark rubbing together. Mm, I heard that noise before. Guys get his dick stuck in a tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what do you do? Are you going to say fuck that guy and fuck his fucking tree or what? <laughs> no. I mean, we can go check in on him. So let's go see, let's see if this fella needs some help. I mean, I think I got a... No, I don't got anything in my pockets to help unstick him. You got an axe. <laughs> a knife. I mean, I guess we can detach him. Oh, you mean cut the tree? No, I don't want to do that, though. I would never hurt a tree. Could we, like, listen for, like, a little bit to see what happens if anything changes? Sure. He's screaming for help. He's going, help, please! Help somebody! Help! Help me! And you hear, like, every now and then you hear, like, a snapping branch and something hitting, and you hear what sounds like a hurt, but I don't know if that sound means anything to you at all. Can I call out? Mm -hmm. Is your name Tommy? Huh, hello? Oh, uh, no. No, I'm not Tommy, but uh, please help. If you can hear me, please come help me. Guys, it's not Tommy. I say we move on. <laughs> They're going to eat me. Please. Wait, wait, wait. Quick, quick. Ask him if he knows a Tommy. Do you know a Tommy? <laughs> can we talk after you save me, please? <laughs> I don't know a Tommy, please. I'll, I'll go over to help him. All right. So you come up this little hill, you look. You see these things that look like vaguely dog-shaped, but they're made of like curled-up bark. They're hollow inside. They're jumping up at this man who's in this tree. He looks like he's dressed oddly. All of his clothes seem like they're well-made, but they're completely covered in different colors and like chalk and all this kind of weird shit. He's got extremely thick glasses. 
and he's up this tree clinging on to dear life as these dog tree things are jumping at his feet. And as you get close to the sound, it becomes louder. For lack of a better word, their bark is extremely loud. Can I throw a flashbang at the dog creatures? If you have a flashbang, you may absolutely throw a flashbang at the dog creatures. Are I you do. throwing with accuracy or are you throwing with strength? How far away am I? I'll say 30 yards. You're on top of a hill. Keep that in mind. I'll go strength because I don't think uh, accuracy I would need to be that accurate as long as I'm in the general area of most of them. Sure. So my strength is a 12. Mm -hmm. So let's roll 16. Did not do that. Get excited. Ooh, no. That's high. He's like, yeah, nailed it. Oh, beans. Yeah, no. So let's see what a flashbang exactly does. So I don't want to get this wrong. This is too important. Momentarily blinds anyone that fails a deck save. I think it does affect some of the dogs, not all of the dogs. I think they turn away from this guy, the three that aren't affected, and run towards you. They're now charging you. And as they get closer, their barking is getting louder and louder and louder to the point it actually it hurts. It's like pulsing in your head. Um, I'm going to need you to roll me a will save. All three of you. I want to go ahead and just say I failed it, or do you really want me to roll? <laughs> you never know. You might roll a one or a two or a three. I got a, a six, and I passed. Excellent. I was over by one. I got a ten, and my will was a nine. All right, Richard, you are shaking. You can't act this, this round of uh, combat. <clears throat> I rolled a big old whopping 18. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> if we were playing D&D round, you'd be crushing this. this I would be killing it. I don't know why I'm just backwards today. <laughs> so these three, I'm going to call them dogs. They're running up. Uh, one of them jumps for you, Jacobus. He's going to sink his teeth into you. So the thing reaches up and bites into your leg with its full ferocity, and it deals one damage. So my HP was a six. It's down to five. Yep. A second one is going to jump in and try to bite you too. And it does because you're stunned. You get one damage. Down to four. The third one is kind of looking around very cagely. It's going to turn towards Sammy and bark directly at you, Sammy. Give me another will save, please. Ah. Let's see. That's a nat 20, which is a nat fail. Oh, yeah. You are stunned. Oh. All right. <laughs> 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 so, Vernon, you're coming around now. They've all taken their turns of action. Now it's going to be on you. You get to act first because you're not stunned all any longer. Right. So two of them are attached to Jacobus. One of them is barking at Sammy. Well, now, which toe, which foot has the least amount of toes? I'd like to help save that foot. My right foot is missing. Six. Oh, toes, I have zero, yeah, I have zero toes on my right <laughs> oh, foot. God, <laughs> I want to try to at least save the foot. I'm going to go for the one that's attached to his right leg. Already, uh, what are you attacking? With my beautiful bedazzled axe. Excellent. Give me a strength check. Fuck. That's a 17. <laughs> with a strength of 16. What is going on? I hope it's in fucking character. He didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think your axe gonna... buries itself in the, uh, the dirt next to the wolf thing. Oh boy. You know, some of the, the light gleamed off the bedazzledness into my eyeballs. I think it's a horrible axe. Yeah. That's good. I like that. So it sunk in. The wolf now releases Jacobus and turns to you. Now, when it's his turn, it's going to try to bite you. Oh, no, please. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> please, doggy. All right, Jacobus, you snap out of it. You have one thing biting you now, and your friend just almost cut your other foot off. What do you do? I will use the saw end of my new axe and saw off the dog's head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All so right. that's dexterity, I'm thinking. Over I always did a dexterity. Yeah, that makes All sense. Right. My dexterity is 11, and I'm rolling a two. Hey, all right. It's weirdly easy because it's just bark, really. It's hollow bark. And you hear him try to bark at you again, and he can't quite pull out of it. It's like, Krah! as you saw into his head, his head falls off. And that thing is defeated. Now there's still two more. And you hear the guy on the tree shouting out, like, hey, hey, just cover your ears and kick him. That's all you gotta do. They, they, they're real loud, but they can't really hurt you. Sammy, you are a live alert, awake, enthusiastic. Now do your thing, baby. I, well, I was just stunned by the dog that came up to me. Am I still stunned or am I good to yeah. go? You missed the one you were, when you were stunned. So you already missed one turn. That's fine. Okay. I think Sammy is, he's probably scared of dogs. So he's going to not even think about using his axe. He's just going to try and kick it. Uh, what is that going to be? A Strength save? I think a strength, yeah. This should be some kind of cool karate kick or something. That's an 18. Mm, so that's I great. don't do a cool karate kick. 
<laughs> I think you're expecting to kick something solid, like in, if you were to kick an actual animal. But because it's hollow, you kick it, it just kind of like lifts up gently and flips back down to the ground. It's like kicking a balloon. It doesn't really do anything. Or, or I just like tap it with my foot, like, ah! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so the thing turns to Vernon now. The thing's going to jump at Vernon's throat. It jumps right at you, Vernon. Give me a, uh, well, it depends if you're going to try to use your strength to beat it away, dexterity to get out of the way, will to scare it off, whatever you want to use. Uh, we, we're going to do strength because all my other stats are horse shit. I thought you might. Uh, so I'm just going to flail and, and like the, the idiot in the tree says, try to kick it. And I rolled a, please, Lord, not another 18. <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> so I missed. What did you roll? I rolled an 18. <laughs> <laughs> if this Rock. was fucking d and I would be killing it right now. Fuck D&D, &D, we're taking you to the casino. <laughs> All right? What the fuck? <laughs> so unfortunately, so you go to punch it out of the way, and it kind of wraps its, its whole body around your arm and bites you right in the neck. And it's really like, it's, it's got you, it's tearing, 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 like trying to tear a chunk out of your neck. And you take one point of damage. Got, I still have one health, but I am not doing well. <laughs> Jacobus, what are we doing, bud? How far away am I from Vernon? Ten feet, maybe tops. I will use my dexterity to uh -huh. use my musket to shoot you the have a dog. Musket. Yeah, should have used nice. that first. <laughs> <laughs> to, shoot, to shoot the dog off of his neck. <laughs> Okay. There's no what way this wrong? could go wrong. I hope we don't roll a net 20, because that'll be the end of over and in. All right, dexterity. A 10 out of 11. I win! <laughs> Amazing. You spin. You target this thing, and it's like, ba boom a thunderous crack. All the birds fly out of the trees. Vern is like, ooh. And you just completely shatter this dog. It's, it's splintered entirely. Vern is like deaf in one ear now, but he's, the dog is thoroughly dead. And the one remaining dog that's still alive turns and runs back to the tree. You see it run up to this tree that this man is stuck in. And you notice that the tree is missing all the bark chunks off of it. And it jumps up the tree and unfolds itself and wraps itself around the tree and becomes the bark again. Combat's over. I, well, that's uh, a new trick. I, now I'm concerned about having sex with the trees if it does that. After these messages, we'll be right back. Coming to the World Wide Web, it's the Internet's premier podcast that gives you the 411 on the 1990s favorite television teens with Tude. The Ninja Turtles? As if... The Power Rangers? Talk to the hand! My bad. You must mean the... No duh, they're all that in a bag of chips. That's P-H-A-T fat. How do I scope that? Just head on over to our Patreon. And starting at a dollar, you'll get two gnarly episodes of Jumping the Street Sharks a month, plus a bunch of other tubular shiznit. Actually, that sounds lame. I think I'll keep my cheddar to myself. Not! So if you want to support us, head to the Patreon link in the show notes. We appreciate you, and can't wait to share more jawsome content with you soon. Sammy takes out his axe, his helicopter axe, and he's like, we, we got to chop down that tree. He goes, uh, can I get down off of it first, please? <laughs> There's no time for that. I just start wailing oh, no. at the tree. <laughs> I mean, you're coming down now anyway. So he kind of like tries to lower himself down fast enough. He, he jumps and he lands awkwardly. This is not a man who's built for the outdoors, it seems. Uh, he dusts himself off as best he can. And you realize that the colors he's covered in is paint. He kind of does like a sheepish bow. He goes, thank you guys so much. Thank you. I really appreciate you. I'm so glad you came by when you did because I have been having a bad day. Let me tell you. You guys have any food or water? I, I don't seem to have any uh, with me. Uh, the, the dogs. Uh, well, it wasn't the dogs. Let me just say that. I, I, I kind of lost it in a river with my other art supplies. It's been a rough one, boys. Uh, oof. Art supplies? Well, oh, yes. I'm... Hardly nip nops. Uh, doubtless you've heard of me. You have hard nips? No, no. My name is Hardly Nip Nops. Uh, famed wilderness painter and artist. I, I, you've seen my works in all of the papers, I'm sure. Heard of my adventures, right? Uh, does this make any sense to you, Jacobus? I don't know. I feel like for Vernon, this would be like Playboy magazine to look at his art. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fair point. But I don't think he's. Uh, he's well read enough. A, uh, yeah, no, no, yeah. Well, Hartley, well, I can say we've hardly heard of you. 
Uh, I like that one. I, you know, you saved my life and I feel like I owe you a laugh. So <laughs> nice one. Thank you. About that food, though, you got food because I it's been a couple days up in that tree. I could use some help. Do we you know have I mean? food? I got some tobacco we could chew, but <laughs> I'm assuming uh, Mr. Shanks, the man who lends you the cart, when he asked you if you needed anything else, he would have given you some food. I think into the odds specifies that if you're going out on an adventure or something, you have like basic climbing equipment, mapping equipment, blah blah blah, and rations. So you have rations then. Well, ni- nice to meet you, Mister Hardly Nipples and uh, Nip Nops. Here, here, and uh, I, I unstrap some of the rations from the cart or gunky or whatever, and mm. I, I hand him over. So he just sits down heavily on the grass. He just goes to town on these things, and he's like, you know, a couple of days ago when I set out, I, I was just gonna go out and paint all the wonderful flora and fauna of the lumberlands. I've heard so many wonderful things about it, but I gotta tell you, this place is not an easy place to live. You know, first I got I ran a follow of that reverse bear. I hate those things. Don't ever fuck with those things, let me tell you. Reverse bears, no. Then I was running away from that thing, and as it was turning itself inside out and reefs inside out and the right ways in, then I, I ended up in a nutkin village. You ever see one of those things? No. Wow, they're like squirrel people, right? And they got these, but not like people-sized squirrel people, they're like tiny things. And I ran and I think I crushed a fountain and I think what was maybe a schoolhouse, there was a lot of screaming. And I kept running because I wasn't about to stop and apologize. I was still being chased with that damn bear. And then ah. I dropped my watercolors. Yeah, my watercolors are gone. Now I can like paint in black and white. Like, what is that even? I, I like whisper over to Vernon, like, I, I don't think this guy's mind is in the is very right i think he's uh, crazy this guy is fucking weird yeah he is weird <laughs> <laughs> i don't see how this guy helps us at all i say we bid him adieu and continue on our mission well he's hey, already hey. taken our food and bullets out of my musket so uh you boys gonna set up camp soon or uh because you know it's dark and it's an awful awful lonely place to be by yourself out here in the woods uh Maybe I could help. I don't know. I could paint your stories, brave adventures. You know, when I tell all the papers about my experience in the Lumberlands, I, I, I'd like to talk about your generosity of spirit and actual generosity and maybe how brave you are and help me fight off those wolf thorns. I kind of like tap on Jacobus's and Vernon's uh, shoulders and I'm like, hey, hey, let uh, give us a moment to think about this. And I kind of like motion to them to like walk across like the glade or whatever to have mm-hmm. a chat. All right. He kind of sits down. And you see him like studying leaves, holds them up to the light very delicately. He takes out a sketch pad and he's trying to like draw the shapes. And then he finds something else really shiny in the thing. And he's picking up bugs in his hands and he's like putting them on his nose and watching them crawl. So, I, I mean, I'm not one for picture books or nothing. Okay. But if this guy can get us our images into the newspaper, maybe we got a, a shot at a, a better company. You know what I mean? And your kind is notoriously hard to photograph, so <laughs> this could be good for you. <laughs> I know, guys. What do you think? Good, good, it could be good PR for us. I mean, I would like to see what this picture book is. Hey, uh, uh, Twinkle Toes, do you have any of your art on you? Like, anything? Show us what you can do. So you look back at him, it looks like he has his his arm up to his elbow stuck in this giant snail thing that's slowly like pulling more of his arm into it. And he's like, can you guys help me out, please? Oh God. Oh no. Oh, beans. Oh, I reached into this log and then this thing started grabbing me and it's all sticky and I think it's burning, but I can't really feel my hands. So I'm not sure if it's burning or what, but Oh no. Can I just walk over and like try and kick the snail? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. A roll strength. Sure. That's a nat 20. So <laughs> You go to kick the snail just as he's like buckling down in pain. You just kick him full in the head and he's out. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as he knows, the Sasquatch walked up to him and just booted him in the face. Uh, this... I fucked up. <laughs> the snail drops off and runs away as fast as a snail can. <laughs> it's like a basketball slowly rolling across the leaves. Uh, anyway, I mean, I, d- I don't think setting up camp is such a bad idea. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll just look after this guy until he wakes up. What's to stop that wolf thorn from hopping off of that tree in the middle of the night? Or the snail from coming back. And it's just like right there. (laughs) (laughs) 
Didn't we just cut the tree down? I think he was starting. I don't to, think yeah. I even like got through the tree at all. <laughs> Fine, we'll cut it down. And we'll use that for firewood for tonight. So I think you make fairly quick work of this. All three of you together, cut this tree down. You're able to cut it down. It falls very loudly. You hear some kayaks as the thing crushes the, the wolves on it. And you got some firewood. So it's getting late. It's almost nighttime now. You build a nice roaring fire, set up your tents. So who's cooking your meal tonight? Probably good old Vern, man. He knows how to cook. All right, Vern, what are you making for folks today? How, what, mm-hmm. what, is, uh, what are you making? Where did this recipe come from? So my mama taught me we're going to have some grilled crickets and, and some... Wait, did we kill that snail? That's good meat right there. You can. <laughs> I mean, it's not too far away. <laughs> if you oh, I guess it. <laughs> it's too fast. Too weak, kidding. Um, so I guess I just forge and just throw everything in a pot. <laughs> just cook it up real good. All right. So we got crickets and then whatever he can find. Yeah, whatever we can forge. Some mushrooms, some moss. <laughs> All right. Some of that tree bark. Give it a little bite. Is that like an aphrodisiac for you? <laughs> oh, you know it. So you guys are served this bowl of this hot bug and refuse <laughs> soup. And I think surprisingly it came up pretty decent. Ryan, uh, <laughs> roll me a will save. And I don't know if advantage is into the odd. I forget. But take advantage oh of it, buddy. Go Let's for it. Let's give that a shot. That's not a good one. Mm-hmm. Neither is that. So it's a 14 and a 12, and my good old whale is three. All right. Well, he's tried his best, and I think you see that the effort was really there. <laughs> it's like when a little kid is like, Mommy, Daddy, I made you breakfast. And it's like orange juice over Lucky Charms <laughs> in a coffee cup. <laughs> it's not, you have to eat it because, God damn it, they tried. Don't knock it till you try it, but <laughs> uh, I, I spoonful some of it into my mouth, and I'm like, mmm. And I just like turn around and spit it out when he's not looking. <laughs> uh, what are you trying oh, to do boy. with poor Hardly anyway? What is, what is what is Hardly doing? Where is his body? I, I think we've got him like I don't know, bundled up and, and safe. I, we probably have like a campfire going. No, that's good. That's nice. After him. So, which one of you is taking the night to keep everyone entertained? Whose responsibility is that? Vernon already cooked, so his job is done. Hmm. I, I guess Jacobus will. He's probably t- had some uh, war stories. All right, Jacobus. What is the story that you tell people at the fire to to keep them entertained at night, help pass some time before it's time to settle in? You all want to hear about how I lost my first toe? <laughs> <laughs> you never forget your first toe. First toe I ever lost was the sixth toe on my right foot. I was happy to lose it. I had five good toes. It was my absorbed twin's toe, so I had to get rid of it. <laughs> oh, my God. I let a gunky, okay. much like Maxi over there, stomp on it repeatedly <laughs> until, <laughs> until it was why, nothing but mash. Why would you let the gunky smash your toe? <laughs> because it would be a good story to tell you it hits at a campfire. <laughs> <laughs> No, of course I didn't. I sawed it off with an axe. Well, what else would I do? You sawed it off with an axe? Yeah, with my... <laughs> <laughs> Did he actually just with the very today? axe that you have in your own hands. I'm an unreliable narrator. What was that? I'm an unreliable narrator. <laughs> you see this axe, boys? Awesome. This axe that I just found? <laughs> I've had this axe since I was a child. <laughs> so why? Why did you cut your toe off with an axe? I needed to get rid of every last remnant of this twin. I feel like he was speaking to me, and I needed him gone. God. So I had what was he telling you? Bad things. Terrible things. Dark thoughts. When I say it was from my absorbed twin, it was about the size of my absorbed twin. Come to think of it, it wasn't a toe at all. <laughs> so you were conjoined twins at the toe? Yes. Seems like this is... A simple issue that could have been very easily solved by any doctor. Did your twin uh, live? No, he did not. Was it related to the operation, or was it like a week later he fell I'm, off a bus or something? Oh, no, I'm pretty sure he was dead before this had happened. Oh, God. I so, couldn't bear to walk around with him in my boot any longer. 
The stench was terrible. Jacobus, you're, you're, trying... you're a weird fella. <laughs> so you oh hear from the God. car, oh, what smells so good? <laughs> oh, welcome up, hard nips. Made some stew right here. Oh, fantastic. Oh, hold on. Oh, he throws up everywhere again. I think I might have a concussion. What happened? I remember that snail biting me, and then the Sasquatch yeah, that, came over. Yeah, that snail just jumped on you. It was vicious. We, oh, we got it off of you as soon as we could. It, well, actually, it's still over there. Ugh. Oh, no. Okay, well, I'll sleep on this side of the fire. I don't, I don't think they like fire, so I think we'll be okay. Hey, before um, you sleep, what are those picture books? Do you have one? Well, all I have right now is this little uh, sketchbook, and he pulls out of his pocket, and he kind of tosses it to you, Vernon. And you see all kinds of native flora and fauna from the lands uh, in the area. You see some very sexy trees of a, of a bunch of different varieties. Um, some of them that look like they're almost trying to float away. They're just barely held onto the ground by these long, graceful roots. And you see the thing that he called the reverse bear. You assume it looks like an inside-out bear uh, that's barking backwards through its asshole. You see his teeth bared. Uh, you see some of the wolf thorns. You see it from an angle like he was up in the tree looking down at them, like he painted them while, or drew them while he was there. And they're all well, really well done. They're, they're beautiful, as far as you have an eye for it. Can you mind if I borrow some of these? Uh, honestly, uh, th that's all I have for this trip, and I need to get them to my publisher. But I'll tell you what, when I get back to my home, I'll send you some pictures of uh, some really great exotic trees that you've probably never seen before. Talking <gasps> palm trees, weeping what? willows. What is a palm things. tree? If you don't know, you probably can't afford it. As, as, as good as my word, it's all I have at this point. So, yep, if I get back to civilization in one piece, I promise I'll send you some tree pictures. All right, we will get you back, sir. He likes it when the willows weep. It's the only way he can get off. I'm in for some nice treatment. Nah, not very strong. Doesn't have any roots. I'm going to bust a walnut. <laughs> <laughs> Getting hard wood just thinking about it. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. What is it about trees that gets you going so much? Oh, are you talking to me? Because I said, ask you a question. I can ask you. <laughs> See? It's all about that geometry. Oh. Maybe we should just leave it alone. <laughs> you know where he meets all these trees? Timber. <laughs> so, I got a question for you, Vernon. Yeah. When you're without the company of a tree for a while, do you find yourself pining for them? I'm sorry. I'm just... <laughs> I haven't been with a tree in a little while now. Oh, uh, there, there. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling pretty bushed. I think you should turn in. Uh, I'm already asleep. All right. So, uh, do you want Hardly to take watch, or who's taking watch? <laughs> I'll take first watch. <laughs> Sammy was good enough to carry me on his back, so he's probably super tired. I'll take first watch. And Vernon always prefers to have morning wood. What's the strangest thing that you hear while you're on watch? Vernon banging a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I hear rushing water. And I'm thinking maybe that's where Hartley dropped all his art supplies. So while you're looking towards the sound of this water, you actually see a little bit of a light in the distance. It looks like the bobbing of a lantern light. It never gets quite to the camp, but you see like someone's checking out the edges of your camp. You can't quite see them. It sounds like one person just kind of walking around the edges, sizing you up. Well, I think I need to alert the other members of the party. Oh, since you're all kind of resting now, you're having your dinner, you all get all your hit points back, but not any strength damage you took, which none of you took any strength damage. So. Thank goodness I really needed that one hit point. <laughs> Hey, you got 50% of your hit points back, baby. Exactly. It was very, I mean it by all seriousness. I really fucking needed that. <laughs> I thought I was going to take you out with that musket. Oh, I thought I was going to die too. We're going to be doing a whole different character. Oh, man. I just had the wonderful, most wonderful dream about a fir tree. What, what's going on? Who wakes Sammy? Oh, wait. We're out here. <laughs> does, so, does anybody have binoculars or... You would have binoculars in the woods. Don't look at me like that. Would, would hardly have any if he, like, I don't know, paint shit? So, hardly's not waking up. 
He had a concussion. You let him go to sleep. He's dead now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Is he really dead? Oh, I'm not a doctor. All right, I'm well, gonna stuff and see if he has okay, binoculars. Uh, he's not dead. He's just very, very asleep. But yeah, he's got binoculars. That's great. He does. And you've got him now. All right. Then I will use my this be will to take just a peek you, in the binoculars. You just look through them with your eyes. Oh, I'll do that then. I want to look through the binoculars with my eyes. You see what looks like light reflecting off of something kind of bluish green and dressed in normal clothes, but it looks like a, I don't know, like a fish man holding a light. What do you see, Jacobus? I see a fish man holding a light. You really <laughs> have? Are, are you sure that's... I, it, I'm looking right at it. I think it sees me. And I think what we have here is a merman. It's like a reverse mermaid is what you're saying. Yes. The fish end on the top and the good stuff at the bottom. <laughs> Guys, what do we do? We got to come up with a plan here. Do we try to make contact? Do we put out the campfire and hope it goes away? I mean, how cool is it? Like the weather? What's the weather like? It's about uh, low 60s. Uh, very low humidity for a change. Slight breeze going through. Pleasant. Um you need a blanket, but not too many blankets. So we wouldn't really need the campfire. I would prefer not to engage anything. I, I think if I went up to him, I, I would probably scare him away. because you, you might know, have a bond, too hideous. I, I'm awful really things. handsome. <laughs> He'd be intimidated by how good you look. That's what it is. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. All right. Is that your plan? You going to walk up to him? Or I'll, I'll go up to him and I'll talk to him, but uh, someone else should come with me. I'll Maybe. climb a tree with my musket. And if okay. it looks like it's not going well, I'll snipe the bastard. I'll bring Hardly with me, too. I'll carry him on my shoulder. Well, what good does that do? Because he'll see that I'm helpful. We found this man on the ground, and I'm helping Yeah, I, I was going to say bait. Oh, that yeah. is a good idea, too. We could leave him in, like, the path. Maybe he'll see him. So, essentially, what I think we could do is we could just, yeah, like what we just said, is we could leave Hardly on the path where we think this fish person is going to go and see what he does to Hardly. It's kind of like a test. Does that I sound like good? Yeah, I'm into it. And I'll still stay up in the tree, as noted with my musket. Okay. Right. I'll carry Hardly over, and I'll try and sneak over in front of the fish man and put Hardly on the ground. And, and maybe maybe bring like a, a piece of burning wood from the fire, the way oh, next yeah. to him, so he's illuminated. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you pick up hardly. He kind of doesn't stir at all. It's just like picking up a sack of flour. Mm -hmm. You get a branch lit. You said you're gonna walk yeah, over towards. Yeah. Take the, a branch the, from the fire. The fishman. So as yeah. you get halfway between the fishman and the fire, he he goes, "Hold on, hold on, goddamn it! Don't you come any closer? I know what you are. I've seen your type around here." Claim what? jumpers. You're going to jump my claim? You can't fucking have it, all right? So fuck off. Clear out. You sons of bitches. This is my what goddamn claim. All your lumber bows are, oh, yeah, you fucking love the trees. You don't spend time in caves like me, huh? You don't do that. God damn it. Go to your trees. You don't come over here. Piss in my backyard. I think Sammy's just utterly confused. What? I, what? It's my goddamn claim. Mine. I was here. I've been here for three years. Well, until like a week ago. But this is my place. You're saying your claim is this forest. No, I got a cave down that way. And I know you guys are waiting for me to fall asleep so you can murder me, take my stuff. But guess what, asshole? You can't do it. Because my cave is ruined. No one can go in there anymore. Then why would we want the cave? Maybe you can figure it out, huh? Smart guy? Think you're tough? Maybe you can figure it out. Clear out stuff from inside the cave and take it. Kill old Dagon. You can't do that. Dagon Cornelius has made it harder stuff than that, my friend. Let me tell you for sure, right now. Uh. Uh, uh, you fucking dummy. Get out of here. You don't have to be so rude about it. <laughs> you, yeah. be rude about you know what? You know what? You gotta show up. Tough man's claim. Come. This all over my face. Tell me it's raining. I don't think so. Fuck off. Why don't you say that right here, right in front of me, huh? Instead oh. of way over there. Oh, yeah, you like that, wouldn't you? I'll sneak yeah. up and stab me in the eyes, huh? Fine. Yeah, come all over right, here. Fine. Fine. <laughs> so this guy walks up to you and he's maybe four and a half feet tall. His lamp is like <laughs> as half as big as his torso. And he's a little, he's a little fish man. He's just dressed in these shabby clothes. 
He looks up at you. He's like, ah, fucking tall son of a bitch. Are you going to pick on me, you goddamn bully? Huh? Take my stuff. Go into my claim. Well, you can't. Yeah, you okay. Well, fucking, here you go. Here's my lamp. Claim's down that way. Head of the cave. Maybe have a little nap. Maybe wake up dead, you idiot. What happened to your cave? Oh, yeah. Oh, let me just show some compassion. So maybe you lower your guard all the way down. Maybe you blink for a second. Well, I don't fucking blink, goddammit. I'm not going to let you stab me in the back of the head with that knife in your pocket. Look, no one's going to stab you in the head. Okay? No. Oh, yeah. Back, if anything, uh-huh. we're going to shoot you. And I, like, point over <laughs> to Jacobus in the tree. See? We're not going to stab you. Oh, oh, oh. you all we think you're out, you. Huh? you fucking big, smart, big brains going to come over here, pick on a little old Dagon Cornelius, huh? You think you're so fucking cool. Well, why don't you go down to my cave and clear it out if you're so goddamn smart? Or maybe if you prove yourself valuable to me, I'll help you out. Or maybe I'll wait for them to kill you, and then I'll go in there and clean up what's left. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go clear out that cave. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, I, I, I'd appreciate that, you, you bastards. Why don't sit down at the campfire? Maybe we'll enjoy a moment for a little bit before we go over there. It's been a while since I had food, and I was admiring the smell of your soup wafting in. And you know what? Maybe I'll go enjoy a bowl, you piece of shit. You won't enjoy a bowl, because it's terrible. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Hunger is the best sauce, you motherfucker. You, you said it was good. I put my heart into that soup. Burn it. No, buddy, it's... You you did a thing. And we you know, you tried, buddy. <laughs> All right, I'm coming down from the tree and walking everybody back to the campfire. You kind of looks around and he's like, What's that guy's problem? Pointing to Hardly. <laughs> oh, nothing. I just accidentally kicked his head in. Oh uh, yeah, it you happens. Know. It's a dangerous place we live in, you know. Sometimes you just get kicked in the head. You know, I think I had you boys sussed out all wrong. I think you guys you might not be that big a Jagoffs. I think we can be friends. <laughs> Where's that goddamn soup? He finds the bowl. He just kind of dunks his head into it. This tastes like shit. And he keeps eating it. How much of him is fish? Is it just his head and upper torso? Or he's what? a man with a, with a head of a fish, and he's completely covered in blue scales. He's got webbed fingers, like kind of like creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, but, okay. But more like fishy than that. And he's wearing human clothes. It's not like he's like you know free balling it out here. He's got no tail. But he's definitely got gills on his neck, and they, they flex when he gets mad. Hey, pal, I gotta be honest with you, the soup sucks shit. But uh, it's hot, it's in my belly, and I'm not dead yet, so uh, good on you, man. Good on you. I, I've, had, I've had worse. But mm-hmm. this, this, this is hog piss. I hate this. So, so Corny, what, what's going on with your cave? What, what's in there, pal? Man, fucking ankle biters are everywhere. Ankle biters, the, the, just, they came in, I don't know, it flooded, and the whole thing got in there, and I hate it, and they bite, and I hate them. Can't get them out. Too many of them. Thousands. What? What's an ankle biter? All right. Picture like a mole. Okay. Not the one on your face, ugly, but like a little tiny mole, a little brown mole. Now picture someone took that mole and cut it in half all the way to his back hips and filled it full of teeth. And these little motherfuckers live under leaves. So all the carpet of the, gra- or the, the forest, they swim under that shit. And usually you find like five or ten. It sucks. You just stomp the shit out of them. It's fine. But there's thousands of these little assholes. I can't go back in there. That's my claim. I need that. I'm going to start rich. Uh, how big is this cave? It's about, I only dug about 50 feet back, but you know, it's big enough. A little windy, but yeah, you know, it's good. It was good until it like, could full of those little assholes. So if we help you clear it out, would you give us a portion of your riches? Give you a portion of this dick? Fuck off. No, can't have that. Tell you what I'll do for you, though. You've got a nice face. You guys seem like you're all right. I don't think you're here to jump my clam after all, but what I'll do is I'll give you some of old Dagon's magic. I'm out here by myself. I know how to use poultices, potions. I know basic alchemy, what I'm saying, herbalism. I can make you some potions that'll heal whatever's wrong with you like nothing ever happened. I got a couple of them in the back of the cave. If you want them, gotta go fucking get them. I don't know, guys. Sounds fishy. <laughs> Say that to my face. He stands up, kicks over the pot of garbage, too. He's like, if that's how you're gonna be, leave me alone. All right. I didn't realize. I'm sorry. You're a fish with two knees. No, I messed that up. Never mind. <laughs> oh, wait, I got to hear where that was going. Yeah. What? 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 <laughs> fish with two knees. He's like a, a two knee fish. He's a fish with two legs. A two knee fish. <sighs> Dude, you know, I thought you guys were on the level, but I think you just upset the scales. 
Fish scales, you idiots! And he punches you in the arm. Ah, you guys are all right. Ah. He's just back down. I mean, we could use a little magic, I'm sure. I kind of like him. I don't know. <laughs> well, there's no sense in doing this at night. It might as well for the day. And you see him settle down right away and go to sleep. <laughs> right into right. your blankets there, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll take the next watch. Aha, cliffhanger. Or maybe not. I Honestly, I'm recording this well in advance of Richard cutting the episode in two, so I have no idea what he chose for the midpoint. But I'm sure he did a wonderful job because he's my special little guy and I love him. As you can hopefully tell, we're huge fans of Eric Jensen's Lumberlands, and we hope you are too. Check the show notes for a link so you can grab your own copy, and while you're at it, check out Eric's excellent Wampus Country blog for more ludicrous levels of creativity and not a few dad jokes and puns. It's wonderful stuff. Before we recorded this, I asked Eric if he had a preference for what system we use, since Lumberlands has no built-in system. He suggested Into the Odd, since it and Lumberlands are both published by Lost Pages. I'm extremely glad he did, uh, because I love Into the Odd. It's fast, light, and does everything you needed to do without getting in the way of sharing a compelling story. The rules don't bog it down. They actually allow for you to be creative, and, and that's the best part of any OSR game. And this is like a weird twist on OSR with Rolling Under, uh, but I think it captures that spirit still. Uh, and again, I'll throw a link in the show notes for that too. If you want to support the Pot of Blunders, please consider heading to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash potofblunders, all one word. We've got membership levels ranging from $1 to $10 a month, which will get you access to things like our Discord, exclusive episodes of Jumping the Street Sharks, as well as a variety of other perks. You can also support the show and help us bring more attention to amazing indie authors by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate any help you can give. We love hearing from you. You can always find us on Twitter at Pot of Blunders, and you can also reach us via email at potofblunders at gmail.com. Want more reviews, interviews, actual plays? Head to potofblunders.com and learn about even more amazing indie games. Thanks for listening. For the Pot of Blunders, I'm Nate Magnuski, and as always, may all your Ds be 12s.